In chapter 3, we talked about y equals mx plus b, how that's slope-intercept form. So we're going to take that, and we're going to use the slope and intercept to create equations. Rather than already having the equation and making the graph, we're going to have the graph and make the equation. But before we do that, let's just refresh some memories about y equals mx plus b. Remember the formula, the slope goes right in front of the x, and the b is the y-intercept, and that gets added on separately. So very simply, in example 1a, if the slope is negative 3 and the intercept is 1 half, it's y equals negative 3x plus 1 half. And that's it. That's the equation. Um, in letter B, we can write y equals 0x minus 2, because the intercept is negative 2. The other way to write that, since you have 0x's, there's no point in writing x's. So what you do in that case is you just write y equals negative 2. Not x minus 2, because x minus 2 would mean that there's an x, but we actually have 0x's. In example 2, we have to pull the slope and intercept from the picture first, and then we can put it into the equation. So we have to get the m and the b. So the b is the easier one, the intercept, right? Because you can just look at where it's crossing the y-axis. This one's crossing the y-axis right here at negative 3. So the y-intercept number is negative 3. Now what you do is, now that we have a point, 0, negative 3, we just pick any other point on the graph. And they actually labeled one for us for 3. So we say, how many boxes do I need to move up or down? And how many boxes do I need to move left or right? So if I start at this dot, I need to move up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I need to go up 6. And then from this spot, after I move up 6, I will go to the right 4. Well, up is a positive number, and 4 is also a positive number, right? Because positive is up and right. A negative would be down and left because of the number line. So we've got 6 over 4 as a slope, and that's okay. You can leave that. But the better slope is going to be to reduce it to 3 halves. Not a mixed number, not 1 and 1 half. Leave it as the fraction. If you want to, you can leave it as 6 fourths. That's more of like a newbie thing to do. But um, when you're not in the beginner phase anymore, you want to reduce it. So the final answer, the best answer, is going to be y equals 3 halves x minus 3. In letter B, we do the exact same thing. We have to find the slope and the y-intercept. So let's find the m and the b. And the b, the y-intercept, is always usually the easier one to find because you just have to look. So it's right here at 0, 2. And the slope from 0, 2 to 4, negative 1, I go down 4, so that's negative. Oops, nope, down 3. And then I go to the right 4, which is positive. So the slope would be negative 3 fourths. That doesn't need to get reduced, or it can't get reduced technically. So the formula is y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 2. When you look at example 3 and you don't have the m and the b already labeled and you don't have a picture to count, if you have coordinates, what you would do is you would use the slope formula. Now back in chapter 3 we talked about the slope formula, but that was a while ago, so let's refresh memories. The slope, the slope formula takes two points, point 1 and point 2, so this could be point 1 and that could be point 2. And you take the y value of the second number minus the y value of the first number, and you divide that by the x value of the second number minus the x value of the first number, and that's how you find the slope. So I always like to label, if this first one is point 0.1 and this is point 0.2, then this is x1, y1, because it's the x value from point 0.1 and the y value from point 0.1, and this is x2, y2 for the same reason. So now we just plug them in the formula. So I have negative 1 minus 5 over 0 
minus negative 3, which is plus 3. So I'll just combine that because I know my integer rules. And you get negative 6 over 3, which reduces to negative 2. So that's the slope. Now the easy thing is that they give you the y-intercept. Right here, remember the y-intercept is where the x is 0 because it's on the axis. So the intercept is actually there. It's actually negative 1. So now you can just put it all together and you get the equation y equals negative 2x minus 1. We're going to do the same thing for point B. We're going to label x1, y1 x2, y2, and then plug it in the formula. Negative 5 minus negative 5, and then 8 minus 0. Negative 5 minus negative 5 turns into plus positive 5, and so it just ends up becoming 0, and 8 minus 0 is 8. 0 divided by 8 reduces to 0, so the slope is 0. And the intercept, again, they gave it to us, is at 0, negative 5. Now we just put it all together in a formula, y equals 0x minus 5. Do you remember what I said is the more advanced way to write that? It's just y equals negative 5, because if you have 0x's, don't write any x's. Now this is just another way of writing the points. So remember, in function notation, you have f of x equals y. So instead of x, they put a 0. Instead of y, they put a 10. So that's just the point 0, 10, which means that this is the point 6, 34. So it's just a more advanced way of writing x comma y. Now we can just crank it into our formula, x1, y1, x2, y2. They want us to write the linear functions, so we have to get the slope and the intercept. So that's going to be 34 minus 10 over 6 minus 0. So that gives me 4. So my slope is 4. And the y-intercept, again, they give it to me because we're still at the newbie phase. They give it to me at 0, 10. So the formula is y equals 4x plus 10. A lot of times you can use y equals mx plus b linear relationships to model some things in real life. So what we do is we call those linear models. When you have that situation, the value of the slope is the constant change, and the value of b is the initial or starting value. So instead of saying slope and intercept, we talk about the, what is the change and what is the starting value. So pause the video for a moment. I'd like you to just read the paragraph, and then I'll go through the four steps with you. So step one is understand the problem. What I did was I looked at what they want us to do. They want us to make a model, and they want us to predict something that's going to happen in 2017. And they also gave us some information about what it started at in 2007 and what it was at 2012. So if the way that we find the slope is to find the rate of change, what we can do is we can use the information that they gave us about 2007 and 2012 and find that change. How much did it change per year? So what happened was it was it went 219 minus 105. That's how much it changed, but that change happened over the course of several years. So what we do is then we have to divide by 2012 minus 2007. How much did it change per year? Remember slope phrases are each, every, and per. So we need to find out how much it changed per year. So let's just do our subtraction. We get 114 on the top, and that is 5 on the bottom. And then 114 doesn't divide by 5. 
so I know what we've been doing is reducing our fractions. But I will tell you, in real life word problems, 114 over 5 is not a number that you would see in real life. So what we do is it is okay to turn that into a decimal um, because it is based on a true life story. So when I divide that, you, I get 22.8. And the only reason I'm turning into a decimal is because it is based on a true story. So let's keep going. We have to find the intercept. And now remember, the intercept is the starting value. So it tells us that it starts at 105. So that is actually the intercept, 105. So I have the slope, that's 22.8. And I have the intercept. So now I can just put it all together in a formula. So y equals 22.8x plus 105 is the model that's going to represent this situation. Then what they want me to do is find out what would it be in 2017. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in a value for x and evaluate the function. But I'm not going to plug in 2017 because that would mean that it's 2017 years since 2007. If you look at the picture, or I'm sorry, if you look at the paragraph, it mentions that we're talking about the number of years since 2007. So how many years is it after 2007 if we want to find out what it is at 2017? Hopefully that doesn't take a calculator. It's 10 years. So we're just going to plug in 10 for x. So y equals 22.8 times 10 plus 105. I'm going to get my calculator powered up. I don't need to do... 22.8 times 10 in a calculator, that's just 228. You move the decimal, plus 105. You can do that in your head, or you can get a calculator. 228 plus 105 is 333. So that would be 333 million, is that the label? Million megawatt hours. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.